Did you know that what is happening right now at Walmart stores all across America is technically illegal and they are breaking the law? Of course not because they don't want you to know, but lawyers insist that's false imprisonment and it's only getting worse. Plus, stay tuned because I have a complete list of states and 10 cities where people are going to feel the worst of all this pain the most uh, because there are big in-store changes coming to all these stores and even Costco members are going to be upset with the latest rollout from the Wholesale Membership Club plus a string of retail thefts hit the suburbs, burglaries plaguing communities that were once considered to be safe and wholesome, but now not so much. Friendly neighborhoods and places where families could trust their neighbors begin to live in fear, and the influx of non-residents are pouring in by the busload, strategically dodging the sanctuary cities they were originally intended to be dumped into. Meanwhile, eviction spikes in this major city in Florida, but this is only the beginning and is getting worse before it gets better. But now surrounding cities and neighboring residents worry and fear the onset of the inevitable panic that comes with the question question of, will they be next? And you don't want to miss what I have to share with you about how Walmart shoppers info is being stolen at self-checkout, which only makes matters worse because I uncovered proof that they are also charging us so much more now for food and groceries that it is not even funny, y'all. Um, welcome to the Squirrel Tribe. Uh, if it is your first time here, thank you for joining us. If you are returning, I love you immensely. Thank you for coming back. Make sure you guys like the video. If you feel inclined, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. We are literally like this close to hitting 170,000 subs, or I guess I would, I would rather call it 170,000 Squirrel Tribe family peeps. That's what we're gonna go with. So I appreciate all of y'all for that. Uh, there is a link in the Patreon if you guys a link in the Patreon. There's a link for Patreon in the description if you guys want to support the channel. If not, no harm, no foul. All right. So did you see what Walmart did? Well, odds are probably not because they just made a massive change that is going to impact a lot of people. And they did it so secretly that, not, uh, that now many shoppers in search of more ways to save money in this world of rapidly rising inflation and the highest cost of living in history will be hit with higher receipt totals when scanning items through the self-checkout kiosk lanes. You know, like when you go to Walmart and you basically do their job for them by ringing your own stuff up, bagging your own stuff, things like that. Choosing to shop at Walmart is typically a result of a variety of reasons, obviously including the convenience of finding a wide range of products such as groceries, electronics, and tires in a lot of different Walmarts. The diverse selection of brands available and the proximity of Walmart locations to people's homes and jobs, of course, factor in too. But the primary, the primary attraction for most people is the competitive pricing offered at Walmart stores, often easily identified by their postings of large signs displaying rollback pricing and discounted money savings. In an era where the cost of pretty much every single product has steadily increased, the desire to find bargains is of course understandable. Nevertheless, Walmart has discreetly introduced a new threat aimed at slamming shoppers and is stealing their personal information. So look out, Walmart self-checkout warning after concerning device stealing shoppers info found attached to kiosks in stores in these cities. But wait, there's more. Because people who have any information on these instances are encouraged to reach out to authorities immediately. And right now, detectives from various Northeast Ohio communities are currently conducting investigations into instances of credit card skimmers. Massive warnings have been issued for all Walmart self-checkout users in Northeast Ohio who are urged to be cautious as credit card skimmers have been found on kiosks in various stores. Detectives from multiple communities are investigating instances of device ice tampering, particularly at Walmart locations in Cleveland, Parma, North Olmsted, Brooklyn, and South Euclid. So if you live in any of these areas, please let me know in the comments. I would like to know. I know a lot of you are in the Ohio, state of Ohio, but I don't know if you're in these specific areas. Now, the Cleveland police are seeking two suspects who allegedly installed a skimmer on a self-checkout register at a Walmart right before Christmas on December 16th. And similar incidents have been reported with thieves using false keypads to collect card information that they can then use to rack up credit card charges and attempts to empty out bank accounts, your bank accounts. But not sure if Walmart even really cares because it's not their money that's at risk of being stolen. 
it's yours. So we already know how they feel about us, the people. Uh, instead, stores and companies like Walmart are more focused on things like eliminating barcodes, the invention that shaped consumer appetites, and moving on to new advancements in AI and tech to make it virtually impossible to skip scan and rob Walmart anymore in the self-checkout lanes. But if you do, then there will be hell to pay because there are already some Walmart stores with built-in police stations and they are enlisting the voluntary services of customers to tell on, snitch, tattletale, whatever, if they see anyone breaking the law in self-checkout. Plus, upon exit, you will be subject to interrogation and receipt checks, a common practice in membership stores like Costco and Sam's Club to ensure correct charges, but have sparked controversy when implemented in non-membership stores like Walmart. Shoppers express frustra frustration over feeling uh, treated like criminals and facing long, long lines at exits. And legal experts warn of potential issues, including false imprisonment risks if detaining innocent individuals without evidence, while some emphasize shopkeepers' privilege to detain suspected shoplifters. But this naturally just feels like they are blatantly violating shoppers' rights. But this gray area... The gray area for these non-membership stores like Walmart remains clouded in ambiguity because they lack a standardized receipt check policy. And as we speak, Costco and Sam's Club are exploring technology to streamline the process. And they say it is designed to enhance convenience. But if it isn't one thing, then it's another. Because Walmart's financial service has become a major target for fraud, according to a ProPublica investigation, and scammers exploit the retailer's lax system, leading to over $1 billion, capital B, my dudes, in fraud losses through Walmart's financial systems between 2013 and 2022. The company's resistance to tougher enforcement, broken promises to regulators, and inadequate employee training contribute to these issues. And Walmart's financial services, including gift cards and money transfers, generate substantial profits for the company, and its deficiencies have attracted government scrutiny. So much so that the Federal Trade Commission FTC for short, sued Walmart in 2022, alleging the company turned a blind eye to criminals exploiting its money transfer service. And of course, Walmart defends its anti-fraud efforts, but faces skepticism due to its historical failings. The investigation reveals the challenges Walmart faces in combating financial fraud and highlights the need for stronger measures. But it just seems like par for the course because it's just the same old cat and mouse game of an eye for an eye. Like I said, these stores are robbing us blind, or so it seems at times. And The Hill just reported about how the average American household spends over $1,000 per month on groceries. This is according to a study analyzing the U.S. Census Bureau Household Pulse Survey. This terrible, tragic news was appropriately found under their poverty section. And the average weekly grocery spending, $270.21, while households with children spend an average of $331.94 per week, which is 41% higher than households without children. And the study revealed variations in weekly gro grocery prices across the country, with California, surprise, surprise, being the most expensive state at $297.72 per week, while other top-ranking states include Nevada, Mississippi, Washington, and Florida. On the contrary, the cheapest states for grocery shopping are in the Midwest, with Iowa, Nebraska, Michigan, and Indiana spending under $240 per week on average. And Miami was identified as the most expensive city for groceries in the entire U.S. of A., with an average cost of $327.89. They said the study suggests a correlation between average grocery spending and education level, and despite a slowdown in inflation in 2023, grocery prices have continued to rise because they're they're always going to continue to rise you cannot convince me they're ever going to give us a break when it comes to the grocery store so as promised listen up because here is the complete list of the most expensive states that includes i'm going to show you and i'm going to tell you look here are your states just so you guys know we have got they're all in the notes right here okay that, those are the, the 10 states. We've got number one coming in at California, a rough average of $297.72 per week. Two, you've got Nevada at $294.76. Number three, Mississippi, Mississippi 
and I don't know if anybody else does it like I do, even as a grown woman, I literally turn 42 tomorrow, and as a grown woman, my brain still goes, how do you spell Mississippi? Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, humpback, humpback, I? Don't do that with any other state or any other words. At no point in time have I spelled something and called a P a humpback or an S a crooked letter. Yet in Mississippi, that's the only way I know how to spell it. So uh, Mississippi coming in at number three at $290.64. Number four, you've got good old Washington at two eighty seven sixty seven. Five, I'm particular to this one, Florida, uh, at two eighty seven twenty seven, which feels about accurate. Uh, number six, you've got New Mexico at 286.39. Number seven, uh, Texas, they do everything big there, so the grocery price might as well be. It's 286.19. Number eight, you've got Louisiana at 282.95. Number nine, Colorado, 279.98. And number 10, Oklahoma. Uh, those are the Sooners, right? Oklahoma Sooners? Yeah, uh, at 279.16. Now, when you break down by city, the top 10 most ex expensive cities for groceries, surprisingly, don't line up with the states because, again, this is an average, but the most expensive cities don't line up because number one state was California, but number one city, Miami in good old Florida coming in at $327.89. Number two, you have Houston, Texas, which Houston, Texas was lower in the list of states, right? But Houston, you've got at $302.65. Number three, you have Riverside at $300.50. Number four, good old San Fran, uh, San Francisco at $298.44. Number five, Los Angeles at $295.33. Then you've got Seattle coming in at number six at 289.23. Number seven is New York, 282.60. Number eight, you've got Dallas at 282.21. Number nine is Chicago, uh, Chi Town at 278.91. And then number 10, Atlanta, ATL, peace up, A Town down uh, at 277.54. But what I find interesting, a lot of these places, I feel like most people go out to eat. These are all very touristy locations. So. Most people go out to eat, and I wonder if any of that has to do like with the grocery bills, like if they're combining there, because it didn't say, but I, anyway, like I said, it's only going to get worse because just the other day in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, more than 200 residents were forced to move out of their Fort Lauderdale mobile home park. 200 people. And in a shrew attempt at offering some sort of incentive, residents were told they had to be out by April, but they would be offered money to leave early if they qualified. But some 200 residents received notices that the Pan American Estates mobile home park had been sold, giving them six months to move out. One resident who had purchased her home in February of 2023, literally not even been a year yet, invested over $20,000 in renovation and planned it as her forever home. But instead, she will have to relocate. And residents were supposedly offered financial incentives to leave early, with those relocating or abandoning homes by December receiving $9,000 to $14,000. The woman who made the $20,000 investment just about a year ago only received $11,000 and sadly expressed the emotional toll of moving from a forever home to a temporary one. This is literally like eminent domain for mobile homes. And what people don't always know or understand is that if you don't take what they give you, then they will take whatever they want from you and give you nothing in return. The, the initial offer, they don't have to stand by that. They don't have to offer you anything else. If you say no to that initial offer, they can just do whatever they want. They were nice enough to offer you something initially. That's how they look at it. Because at the end of the day, profit over people, they could give two rats booties about us. The mobile home park now managed by the Urban Group faced further scrutiny on Christmas Day when multiple trailers caught fire with the cause still under investigation. I don't know, intentional arson? You want something uh, out? You want people out faster? The easiest way to do is set it on fire at Lahaina. I'm just saying it's been known to happen. And so far, it seems like most have cleared out and just about 20 families still reside in the mobile home park for now, unless they burn them out too. But this is only going to create further disparity. And just as Kevin, my husband, Kevin247 on YouTube, has been telling everyone on his channel, this is the greatest wealth transfer in history and it is happening right now. People won't be able to afford to live. We won't be able, be able to afford to buy food. Housing will be too expensive. And instead, people will resort to acts of desperation in order to survive. 
like crime and theft and other criminal activity. For instance, there have been a string of thefts and burglaries plaguing Chicago suburbs lately. And some people will say, well, it's Chicago, of course. But I mean, it, it, it happens everywhere. But unfortunately, uh, Oak Brook, Illinois, where authorities say Chicago suburb has been battered by a string of recent crimes committed by migrants who live in or near the Windy City. I would like people to really remember that, that a lot of these places you're seeing an uptick in crime also happen to be real close to some sanctuary cities where busloads of people are being dropped off daily. So mm. from the end of October to the middle of January, a total of 47 migrants were arrested in Oak Brook, Illinois, one small city, Oak Brook, Illinois, mostly for alleged property crimes and that most of the migrants who were arrested were charged with retail theft and burglary outside of the sanctuary city. Get dropped off, disperse, wreak havoc. The latest incident involved uh, an Ecuadorian migrant who resides in Chicago, excuse me, and is accused of stealing more than $3,000 worth of merchandise from retail stores and invading immigration and customs enforcement, ICE for short, another three letter agency there, supervision by cutting off his electronic monitoring device. I didn't give you a whole shady look whatsoever when you cut off your monitoring device. Another happened about a week ago where Oak Brook police officers responded to a retail theft call from a local Macy's store. And upon arrival, they conducted an invest investigation into what um, to place only. Uh, sorry, I lost myself to find that a 32-year-old migrant had entered into the store, put on a jacket worth about $395 and left without paying for it. And following a search of his vehicle, police found approximately $3,000 worth of suspected stolen merchandise as well as rolls of tinfoil. Additionally, police noted that they uh, located an ICE monitoring device that he had allegedly cut off, as well as a fake Washington driver's license that featured the defendant's photograph, but it had a different name. And the list just goes on and on. Nearly 34,000 migrants have arrived in the sanctuary city of Chicago and over 156 million dollars, capital M, my dudes, has been spent on housing and care in just the last few months of migrants, not American homeless, not veterans, not anybody else, not, you know, women and children and domestic violence, none of this stuff, but on migrants themselves, not actual Americans. That's where our tax dollars are going to work, just so we know. But speaking of work, we're all going to have to work a whole lot harder just to attempt to have a hope of survival because this is happening right now in California and it is coming to 49 other states next. It's not just California. We're all on this chopping block. What was once considered cheap and budget, budget saving cost effective option for many families has gone by the wayside because now fast food is about to get more expensive and a Southern California fast food franchise owner, Marcus Wahlberg, not to be confused with Marky Mark or Mark Wahlberg, uh, operating four fat burger restaurants anticipates raising menu prices when the minimum wage for fast food employees increases to that $20 an hour in April under a new California law. Wahlberg, without the H, W-A-L-B-E-R-G, cites uh, challenges in adapting to the wage increase with customers already complaining about high prices. I want to be like, no sugar, honey, iced tea, Sherlock. Like, what did you expect? McDonald's and Chipotle have also hinted at menu price hikes. Some Pizza Hut franchise operators in California laid off in-house delivery drivers due to the law. And Wahlberg mentions trimming employee hours and eliminating paid vacation time. So again, let me just let me jump into my own little notes here and, and squirrel off for a second. I said it before and I'll say it again. Minimum wage goes up, price of everything has to go up to accommodate new minimum wage. So then minimum wage is too low, so minimum wage goes up, so price of everything goes up to accommodate new minimum wage. And we're constantly gonna be here. And the next thing you know, if you want a burger, you're paying $100, and if you want cheese on it, it's $105 because cheese is extra. Heaven forbid you go to Chipotle and now it's $50 for a bowl. You want guac? Well, ma'am, that is so much extra. Now you're at $65 for a bowl with some guac on it. It's just going to continue. It's this like ladder, climbing ladder of crap that we get, we are subjected to every few years. It seems there's the, the problem with the fact that, uh, um, the, the pay rate is too low. And so, you know, people want to pay people more instead of people getting different jobs. I mean, 
a lot of people will say that working at fast food places is not supposed to be a career as a, a part-time worker or a full-time worker, unless of course you're management. But, but that is something that a lot of people have to do. It used to be those were the jobs for in high school or right after high school or working your way through college, you needed a part-time job. Now, unfortunately, that is something that a lot of people have to do as a career just to have a job because so many places aren't hiring people. Um, and a lot of people don't have degrees because college is so flipping expensive, you're paying it until the day you die. So you're just gonna consistently see people needing more pay because the prices of this are going up. So then this, and again, it's that ladder that you, there's never a top to it. There's never a top to it. Now, critics argue that businesses may raise prices or invest in automation to offset higher labor costs. The minimum wage increase aims to help fast food workers cope with living costs and inflation. Or just a really dumb idea, I'm gonna pull out my butt real quick, is how about we lower inflation and the cost of living? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's something that could be done, but that would make too much sense to make it so that people can actually afford life. Uh, however, the law's proponents believe uh, it's overdue to address the industry's reliance on low paid workers and consumer reporter David Lazarus suggests pricing products in line with operating costs rather than making drastic cuts. We all know it's not sustainable and you can't please everybody all the time. Our society is basically headed towards ruins and so is our dollar and currency, or maybe there's still some hope left. At Costco, uh, they maintain a no frills shopping experience to keep prices low and heavily relying on their densely packed stores. The retailer, known for wide shopping carts and lack of dressing rooms, has added mirrors in the clothing section, but is sparking concerns about aisle blockage. If you've ever been to a Costco, the carts are massive, the aisles are decent size. You can fit two carts through there, but in that little clothing and books and wine and whatever area, it gets a little tight ski every once in a while. Now, however, Costco's stock has performed well. It is up 44.6% just in 2023. And despite potential shopping inconveniences, CFO Richard Galanti assures members that inflation is not a significant factor in prices with a trend toward zero to 1%. And Costco aims to continue passing on lower prices to customers while continuing to press vendors amid changing commodity components and reduced shipping costs. Let me just say, Costco not having to raise their prices as much as maybe a Walmart or a Publix or Kroger, Fred Meyer, Albertsons, whatever else, it sounds good, but you have to remember, you're also paying to be part of a Costco club. You don't have to pay to go into Kroger or Walmart yet, give it time, I'm sure they'll find a way to charge everybody for stepping foot in the store, but Costco and Sam's Club right now, you pay to be part of their membership. So your $60 or $120 that you're paying in your membership every year helps them keep their costs down because they're pulling in the profit from you. They don't have to get it from the, the things they're selling, they get it from uh, you want to be part of Costco. If you're buying a lot, those memberships definitely do come in handy. But if you're not, you're kind of helping feed, feed the, feed the man. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Squirrel Tribe, thank you for letting me bring this to you. I appreciate you very much. Uh, I love you all immensely. Yesterday, day before, the last couple days have been kind of rough. So thank you for sticking with me, staying by my side. I appreciate you and the whole entire Squirrel Tribe family we have going on over here. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day, my dudes, and I will see you on the next one. Love y'all. Bye.